the name Jaws of Love feels really heavy. That was that was like a lyric I was trying out for for a different song uh, many years ago, and then I ended up writing a whole song to that just one phrase, Jaws of Love, and that's the first track on the album, also called Jaws of Love, and I just loved that imagery so much, and it felt so right with the tone of all the music that I just wanted to call the whole project that. Um, but I just I love the idea of love being merciful. Mm -hmm. Uh, like like a like a natural force where where it's so unpredictable, uh, like the idea of like some something like picking you up in its teeth, and it, it, in one second it could tear you apart, and another second it just could, it could hold you, and like you could see the view from like the T Rex's mouth or something. In the record about my relationship with my wife where um, I, I love love songs where they're more tortuous and breakup songs and that stuff where you kind of in the muck the the really happy love songs uh, that I think are so hard to write uh, that a lot of that you hear a lot in pop music or they just whenever I've tried to write them they've come off just like super cheesy uh, so somehow from being in the relationship with me and my wife, um, which I feel like is a very strong, really amazing relationship I'm very lucky to be in, um, there was a lot of middle ground. There was a lot of um, in between the highs and lows of love that I think I was sifting through and thinking a lot about, which kind of came to the surface on this album. Natives. It's a group thing. Mm -hmm. Now it's a me thing. It, it definitely is. It feels like, uh, in a way, more effortless, where I can make all the decisions on my own and and just kind of do whatever I want all the time, which is very freeing and liberating and and very nice. On the other hand, I'm doing all the work, and I'm uh, at anything that happens, like good or bad, is celebrated or uh, feels devastating only by me. So yeah, I don't know. They're just they're kind of different beasts, mm -hmm. and I know how to succeed in a band. For I've I've known that for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and so this was definitely uncharted territory. Putting this record out and trying to do stuff on my own, and um, so far. I think it's uh it's gone pretty well. I I'm I've been really happy with it. Your love, your love, your love, your love is all I need when I can face the actions of the world. I don't believe your love, your love, your love, your love is all I see. Now, the first time we met is about eight years ago when we were sitting in a radio studio doing the session to meet the session. Now you're here. Your phone goes off with a picture of your mother. Now, what has been the biggest achievement over the past eight years for you? Oh, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think just three band records and a solo record feels like quite an achievement so far. And... Um, it's so hard because I think so many amazing things have happened throughout our career so far that have been maybe in that place or time not fully appreciated. We got to play the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles in our home uh, in 2011, so barely after we put out our first album, and I didn't understand how big of a deal that was. You know, I didn't I didn't understand the the gravity of what was happening. I was just kind of like deer in the headlights just like getting through it and uh I, I remember trying but you know you never 
you're never really going to be able to appreciate, I think, everything fully in the moment. I think that's like a thing that I've been trying to think about a lot as I'm getting older and now I'm putting out this record and just trying to appreciate any anything that comes my way as like a, a miracle. Like if anyone listens to any music you ever make ever, it's like a miracle. And I think I'm understanding that more and more now. Yeah.